All right, ready, ready. I thought I would make another EDC video. I do these every once in a while because I like to change up my, my stuff. I do find myself constantly returning to certain things because I just think it's cool. Um, but a lot of it is usability and just how I've kind of settled into my EDC. I used to carry a ton of crap in organizers and stuff. Don't really do that anymore. Um, everything's kind of either clipped in my pocket or just kind of the bottom of my pocket. Uh, and I'll explain that later. Before I get to that though, I, I did add to my normal EDC video instead of just having knives and pens and lighters and combs and stuff like that. I thought I'd add in just some of my things that actually enter my hand on a daily basis uh, for whatever reason. Um, before I get into that though, let me preface it by stating that I do, I fast from like 7 p.m. at night until like 1 p.m. So that means I don't take any calories, um, but I do need my caffeine, but I hate coffee. So I do need to get my caffeine in and it might even be at a placebo effect at this point in my life, but I do feel more energized after I've had some caffeine. And I have a tendency, I like to just sip it. I don't like to like guzzle it. So I go with Monster. Um, I do a zero calorie when I'm fasting and then um, later in the evening when I'm going to the gym I like to get a get one with calories in it and I sip on it at the gym um, they have the little nook area where you keep your key so I stick in the back and in between sets if I'm needing to rest or in between exercise I'll go over and take a sip and it, it you know it just you know, it might just be a placebo effect but the little bit of sugar that's in it and then the caffeine just pushes me through my workouts now I do drink tons of water so I don't want you to think I'm just drinking caffeine all day um, so I drink tons of water like in the morning I'll get up and drink a bunch of water as soon as I get up and then on my drive to work I'll bust out a monster and I'll sip on that all the way to work which is over an hour and then it'll usually ask me like another hour so I'll sip on one for like two hours uh, before it's finished and my go-to right now for zero calorie is the whites uh, I just love them um, Close seconds are the reds, um, if you know what I'm talking about. You can, I used to be able to buy these in a case, red, white, and blue. Like, so there's the whites, the reds, and the blue, and they're all zero calorie um, from like a BJ's wholesaler. But I don't have a membership there, I moved away, um, so I kind of buy them individually now. Uh, but yeah, that's my go to for zero calorie. If I am going to the gym and want some calories, um, my go to right now is the Pacific Punch, really good. Ironically, I hated Punch growing up, but now I love it. Um, and that is my favorite one. Um, I keep myself stocked up on those. And actually, if I were to show you my refrigerator, I probably have 10 different varieties um, of Monster, just in case I wake up one morning, I'm like, I can't stand to have a white one today. Or if I'm going to the gym and I can't stand to have the Punch, for whatever reason, I always have some calorie versions and some zero calorie. And then I keep uh, some in my, um, pantry you know that aren't refrigerated just in case as well so that's my caffeine for the day and i will typically have two of those a day one in the morning zero calorie and then one while i'm working out so then so i fast until about 1 p.m i'll have my first protein meal um and then for the rest of the day um until i get home i will sip on a protein concoction of monster milk I know. Um, I just love it. I love the flavor of a chocolate monster milk. It tastes like yoo to me. I've tried every other brand, real expensive stuff. But at the end of the day, you got to stick with what you know you'll stay with. And um, it's just for me, it's flavor. So yeah, there might be a little more sugar in monster milk and more calories in some of the other proteins, but I like the flavor. So the way I counteract that is I use um, lactose-free milk. That's a biggie. I used to drink regular milk and then I just kind of, it hit me one day, all the, the sugar that's in milk and the amount of milk I drink. I usually drink a half gallon of milk a day. So that's a lot of sugar. So what I do is I use my mid-size Yeti. Um, you have the little tumbler, you know, the, the shorter ones that you could use for like coffee or like water. This is a mid-size. I have a larger one that I use when I'm working outside. I fill with like a water and I'll put a little, I call it grape drink, just a um, sugar-free powder you put in it with some ice. 
Um, what's good about these new ones is they, you know, my bigger one, it just, your lid comes off and you have the big old mouth. So you got to kind of drink out of the mouth. They put this insert. So this is a second piece that will unthread. And you could, you know, drink from the mouth if you want, but like you got a smaller hole here, so you're not going to spill it all over you. And there is a ball in there. So just to give you an idea how much I put in this thing, I'll put three scoops of protein. Um, and then I'll fill it up to almost the neck with milk, just enough so I can shake it up, keep it shake, shooken up. And uh, I sip on this until dinner. And this is, I would have to say, close to 200 grams of protein in just that. And again, I sip on it um, for four hours. And it does stay, the Yetis are great for staying cold, so I don't have to worry about that. So that's the bulk of my protein for the day right there is, is right there. And I just do one of those a day. So like I said, the EDC is a little different this time. I even haven't got to like my true EDC. I just kind of thought that'd be kind of cool for you to know um, how I go about that. And again, you can't have a Yeti without putting all your, you know, your stickers on it. So I, all of mine are all, and I continually um, cover old ones with new ones and stuff. Just what I do. So, my uh, I guess I should finish with stimulants. So, I do have a couple bad habits. Um, I like to smoke a pipe, um, but I can't really. I don't really do that on a daily basis. So that's kind of more like a leisurely activity. Um, but I do. I found a new tobacco product. I, I, I'm a big dipper. Um, but um, I found this new product. It's like it's a tobacco-less nicotine. So it's called Zine. And uh, this one is Cool Mint. Um, and these are the threes. You can get them in three milligrams or six milligrams. I just started using these and the sixes, um, they were lighting me up right off the bat. So um, I guess when I was chewing, chewing uh, tobacco, it's, you, you were, you're not getting a lot of nicotine in the uh, overall scope of things. It's more of like a, I'll just like the feel, you know, that, uh, you know, that uh, tobacco down there. Um, so I started using these about three weeks ago and um, each pouch in here. So if you wanna see what it looks like, if you haven't seen these before, um, there's these little pouches and it's just uh, nicotine with some type of filler and then flavor. And they don't dissolve the pack. It, it, um, the little pouch doesn't dissolve. You end up spitting it out later, but you can swallow the spit. You don't have to spit it out. And uh, I'll just take one, put it down between my lip, just where you know God meant for it to be. And uh, um, it's almost immediate. You can feel the the, the rush. Um, but yeah, I'm working my. I'm doing the threes right now. I think I'm already at the point where. I'm gonna have to move up to the sixes because uh, I had a daughter's soccer game yesterday and after like 15 minutes, I could tell it was gone and I had to put another one in. So I think I'll be switching to the sixes. Um, the Cool Mint's the only one that I can tolerate the, the spiciness of it though. Like I bought um, peppermint, uh, cinnamon, and they are all just, they're just too spicy for me. Uh, the, this they make some in different fla other flavors too, but I do like a mint. But again, maybe a wimp. I don't know. But I like the cool mint. So if you're looking for something that's tobacco less, but you can still get your you, you can get your your buzz on, go with the Zine. Um, so yeah, I do these when I'm driving, bored. You know, just need a little pick me up. So that's in my right back pocket fits down into the circle where the other can used to be so yeah just try to be <laughs> a little more healthy I guess but anyway yeah so Zion if you're if you chew um, you might like it all right so on to my traditional um, EDC um, first off I want to go with my keys I have a bad habit of laying my keys down anywhere I go if I'm in a store um, I just lay them down and I don't know how many times I've had to go looking for my keys. So the way I've dealt with it is I bought this short 
dog leash. It's about a little over two feet, I guess. Real heavy leather. And whatever set of keys, whatever vehicle I'm driving for the day, I'll throw them on here. And I'm very aware of this. So I'll put it in my pocket. Or if I'm wearing a hoodie, I'll stick it in the pocket. And for whatever reason, I have not laid this down yet because it just mentally, just, just the size of it, I always remember I have it. So I've kind of cured myself of laying the keys down. So um, got the four runner keys on here today because I'll be heading out here in a little bit to the gym. So yeah, I, just, I bought this a, a couple years ago. So any set of keys, I just throw them on here and uh, just let it hang out of my pocket or I can just keep it in my hand and it, it has cured me of losing my keys. Everybody's got to do something, I guess, to solve their problems and that has solved mine. But again, it's big, bulky, but that's the whole point. Of keep reminding me for whatever in my simple little brain not to lay my keys down. All right, so we're going to move on to an object that I loathe, but in our right now in our world, that is pretty much mandatory. And I'm one of those people that, I mean, I don't want to make a spectacle. Um, kind of just want to be left alone. So I've kind of fallen into it. I did kind of buck it for a while, but yeah. Anyway, I've got enough going against me just the way I look. So got the mask. Now this is made by a company called Beard Tart. And what it does is just hang straight down. So. It's not up underneath your beard pushing it up in the weird shapes. So this one, it does have a little piece of metal that slides in as a as a nose and it folds around your nose. And then you just, you you tighten both sides at the same time on the back until you get to the um, tightness and it goes up over your ears. So this is what I use. Yeah, it is what it is. Hopefully that stuff will go away soon too. All right, so there's that. So, my wallet, my least favorite thing I got right now, and I, I think I've had this wallet in um, many of my EDC videos, and I always preface it with, with I'm just looking for a new one, and I already know what I'm going to get, um, but it's just a matter of paying for it. This is a Hellbent Holsters, nothing against the wallet, it's Kydex, it's got a um, carbon fiber uh, money clip that you can take out, so I usually keep... Um, uh, gift cards, um, cash, which I don't have any right now. I always try to keep at least a hundred dollars and just cash just for the places where they don't take credit cards or if I just don't want to swipe because I'm feeling like there might be a little shady there because I have had my information stolen. So I usually try to have cash, but I used the last note yesterday and then my Costanza level of credit cards. I just don't know how this happens, um, how, how I get so many. A lot of them are uh, identification cards for different aspects of my life, but uh, there are quite a few cards in there too. So eventually this will go away into something um, nicer. Um, so yeah, look for that later. Um, let me get to my eyewear. I have two pair of Wayfarers. Rayman Wayfarers. I, I get the ones actually made in Italy. They're made well, better. Um, I have very sensitive eyes to the sun. Woe is me, I know. Um, and very poor near sight. So these are transitional. Um, they are uh, tinted right off the bat. They are, they've got a glare, protective layer, anti-scratch layer, and they do transition to dark um, and they're bifocal so that I can see shit up close. So I, 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 I have two pair <clears throat> at all times in case I misplace a pair. Um, I just feel like the re I've tried on every kind of glasses I can think of and I always go back to the wafers just because I like the way they fit my big old melon. So two pair of theirs and then um, for my sunglasses I have been wearing uh, Oakley fuel cells for probably a decade now. So those are, these are those. And I did figure out a little way to save money about a year ago. 
I drop the shit out of these, scratch them up. I typically will turn them upside down, put them on the top of my hat. My hat's turned around, put it on the back. Sometimes I'll, you know, I'll put them back here like that. But inadvertently, they fall off, hit the ground, get scratched up. And then I found myself buying a new pair. And then I got this bright idea. I would look online to see if there was a company that replaced the lenses. And you can go on eBay and buy aftermarket replacement lenses for these that are polarized for like nine bucks. So I usually buy them uh, two pair at a time. And you just pop out the uh, scratched up lenses, pop new ones in. And I have probably put six pair of lenses through this set of frames um, in the last couple years. Uh, so these I just put in like a week ago. No scratches yet because I haven't dropped them, but I'm sure I will drop them today on the way to the gym or into the gym, leaving the gym. Um, but the frames, you know, are still in real good shape. It's a matte black, so it doesn't show um, scratches. Um, but I can't stand when you get you start getting the scratches in the front and you get, you actually could see them with your eyes. So if you're thinking about um, trying to save money, you want a pair of good glasses, um, you got a big melon, the fuel cells are a great choice. And you can always buy um, aftermarket lenses and pop them in there for, like I said, 10 bucks. Can't beat that. These glasses are, you know, 160, 170 bucks brand new. At least they were when I bought them. They could be less or more. I don't know. But just buy new lenses. All right, so that's my glasses. Now let's get on to the core of probably what you wanted to see in the first place. So I'll save the knives to last. Um, this one always makes it in. This is my company. This is my beard comb. Um, kind of hard to use now as the beard's getting longer. I don't really find that as it's gotten longer that I really have to do much with the like brushing out because it kind of does stay. Um, as it's gotten longer, it does kind of stay. But I still like to touch up the mustache and stuff. So this stays in my back pocket. Plus it has a bottle opener on it. This is really the only thing that I have that has a bottle opener on it. So that's my hut. And they don't make these anymore. It's a co company called Hudson um, something or another. Um, but it was hand milled out of stainless steel. Very well made. Again, I say this every time. This is one of my favorite items I own. Put a little piece of leather with a brass bead on it. And uh, that goes in my right back pocket next to this. Then in my right uh, pocket deep carry, I always have some Burt's Beeswax. Um, I'm really liking the coconut and pear. Um, really good stuff. So that's in my right deep carry, like just sits in my pocket. Now in my fifth pocket on the right side, I, whenever I buy pants, I always have to have the fifth pocket, like in jeans, like Levi's and stuff. And for that, this is a mainstay. This is my TPT slide. This is made out of titanium. It does have a full size, um, you know, exacto blade in it. Real easy. If you haven't looked at the TPT slides, real easy to get the blade out to replace it. It's all one hand maneuverable. A lot of these that you buy these little exacto knives it takes like two hands to to um, get the blade out so this is a one-hander again it's titanium very well made I could take this whole thing apart if I wanted to looks like it has uh, Torx head screws in it I put a little you know uh, piece of uh, paracord took the uh, guts out of it put a little little brass bead on it so that's my fifth pocket and the reason I keep this is because I find the majority of things I'm opening with a knife aren't really things that I want to use my knife to dull it on. So this is like um, breaking down boxes, maybe open on a letter, uh, cutting, uh, cutting the tape on a box, all that stuff that dulls a knife really fast. Um, and then you get the, uh, the residue from the tape and stuff on your knife blade. Um, so I can use this and then just flip the blade around for the second use and then take it out and put a new blade on it and never have, you know, you're not going to sharpen these things. So I, if I, one of my biggest recommendations to anyone is to have a, for the, for me, this is actually a third knife in my pocket. Um, but to always keep something like this, uh, box opener in your pocket for, um, that, those kind of duties. Um, and plus if you're in the office, I'm not saying I'm in an office, but if you are in an office and you have to open something, you bust this little guy out, they're not going to give you a second look. 
um, you bust out one of my other knives, you know, you might get some luck. So again, this is just kind of society friendly and it does the job. And fifth pocket, don't even see it. All right, so also in my fifth pocket, next to it is my favorite light. This is the Prometheus, Prometheus uh, QR, any quick release. It typically comes with a, like a, uh, a key ring on it, but I did spring for the clip. Um, and this is in the raw brass, so it's patinaing up nice. Just real simple, um, use just twist, and it does have like, let me see, it has one, two, three, I think four, one, two, three, no, it's three settings, three brightness settings. Super small, very well made. I have a bunch of uh, pocket uh, lights, but this is my go-to because it, I can put it in that fifth pocket next to this TPT slide and I don't even notice that it's there until I need it and it is bright enough um, it's not a tactical flashlight like I wouldn't use this to to um, you know blind someone if I needed to uh, temporarily blind them um, but uh, it's just more for if you need to see something in the dark so yeah that's there all right so in the Clipped to my right pocket, I have one of four-ish knives that I've been playing around with lately. Um, my first one is my Sabenza 21 that I modified. I uh, acid etched and then tumbled the blade to match the rest of the knife. This is a Tonto shape. Um, has the inlay micarta. Looks like leather to me, but it's obviously it's micarta. And this was one of the I think this was the first knife that I actually did that to. I know people think it's insane, but I just think it looks awesome. I put a titanium bead on it with leather. Um, so definitely a big, big carry for me. Love this knife. So that's one of four. Then my most recent purchase was my Medford 187 flipper. Um, I did a video on this. I did a video on all these, but um, my biggest issue with this, I had some lock stick when I got it, which was weird because I've never had this kind of lock stick before. So this has a G10 scales titanium uh, frame lock. Um, it was oh, this catching, was catching on that uh, on that tang of the blade real bad. I mean, to the point where I'd have to almost like tap it with something to get it out. Um, so I took the knife apart, did a video on that. Um, it was just really gunked up because a lot, a lot of times these knives will get made. They'll be stuck in a box for like a year or two and whatever lubricant they use in there, it just seizes up around the knife. So I had to take it all apart, cleaned it, re-lubricated it with some fluorinated um, grease uh, from Chris Reeves and now it's butter. I love this knife. Um, just love everything about it. It's got a very tactical feel. You could use, you could, you could, uh, you could uh, use this knife with a pair of gloves on easily with all the jimping on it. Um, big jimping on the blade. I like this finger choil. I can get my index finger in there to really choke up on if I need to. And then I use the uh, flipper in between my fingers. It just gives you some more uh, uh, control over the knife. And it has a ton of jimping on the bottom uh, for a few years in a pair of you know, operator gloves or whatever. So, that's a nice little knife. All right, moving on to another one of my favorite ones. I took this knife, it's the Paramilitary two. I weathered it, put a set of titanium copper scales on it. It's nice and patinaed up, patina patina. Got a copper scale uh, bead on it. I patinaed up the clip. Um, just a really ergo, just ergonomically just a great knife. I mean, I just love the way you can just like I, I like having that jumping and have the rise on that blade. So, you know, I am using it. My finger's not going to slide up the blade. It's just you know, I could go on and on. You get the finger choil up here. You can choke up on it. Um, I mean, hundreds of videos been made on just the just the perfection of this knife. Um, so again, another one of my favorite knives. And then my most recent one I built was the uh, bug out. I acid washed and stone tumbled this one. 
this is a pair of aftermarket uh, copper scales that I had to really modify to get them to work. But again, really nice knife. Not a real fan of the axis lock. I don't like having to trust those little wire springs in there for the knife to deploy and um, stay locked. Um, I know it's pretty strong when it is deployed, but more new, more um, moving parts in a knife means more chance of it uh, failing. So I'm a big fan of the liner and the uh, frame locks for that reason, or fixed blade, obviously. But again, I like to carry this little guy. Um, it's an awesome little knife. So, all right, and then on to, I, I always carry my TPT slide. I usually carry a folder. And then on my back to my weak side, I will carry a fixed blade, small one. My son got me this one. This is the Rowan by SC Knives, Azula 2. Um, got a nice little Kydex case, good retention. And the great thing about this one, it comes with a belt clip that you actually turn upside down or turn it so it's a uh, 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 vertical carry and you can actually put it in your pocket. Because I know the new thing now is uh, um, you know, pocket carry fixed blade. So, but I put this, um, you know, behind my middle butt belt loop on back of my pants, cover it up with my coat, jacket, shirt, whatever. And that's just my weak side uh, knife. Good finger choil, good jumping on the blade, just a good size. I get all four fingers on this little blade and got a nice little uh, uh, coating on the blade to keep it from rusting. Just a nice little uh, drop point design there. All right, a couple more things. Lighter, more for fidget factor than anything, but I do smoke a pipe. I did, this is a big lighter, I mean, uh, um, one of these uh, Zippos, I should know that, I get a million of them. But I like the raw brass, it's patinaed up nice. Uh, I did take the guts out of this and put a butane torch in it. It's just more dependable, uh, doesn't run out as quick. Much hotter, you can really like shoot on fire quicker. I like to start fires in my fire pit with it. Um, the only bad thing is, is it does burn so hot that if you're outside, you can't see the flame. Like you got to be kind of in a shade area to see that flame. But again, much more dependable than a regular Zippo with the but butane uh, liquid in the bottom on the cotton. So this is just a little insert, pull it out, stick it in there. And when it runs out, it runs out quick and you can just fill it up. But I have been using this thing nonstop for like two months and it hasn't run out yet. Last thing. My... Raw Brass Fisher Space Pin. That goes in my left pocket as well. Next to my lighter. So those are in my pocket. I find myself constantly fidgeting with them. Just run it. It's almost like a worry stone. I just put between my fingers and stuff. Always messing with them. So that's the biggest reason they're in my pocket. And finally, I have to have some type of a glass case to keep my glasses clean. I like to, uh, if I take my glasses off, I put them in the case. That way I don't drop these because they're super expensive. And just constantly cleaning my glasses. And then on my wrist, I got my G-Shock. This is the Rage Master. This rarely ever leaves my wrist. I got a ton of watches, but so dependable. And then last but not least, I have to have a hat. Um, big fan of the flat bill with a slight turn up in the front. I know some people probably hate that, but that's just how I like it. So that I can turn it around too and when I'm at the gym. I can sit back on a piece of equipment. The bill does not hit anything. Um, but this is my um, Boat Team 22 hat. So that's a new one in my, my little collection. But yeah. Anyway, that's it, folks. Um, any comments or questions or anything for me? I appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one. And I'm sure when I do another EDC video, this will all change at least to some degree. But thanks for watching. Later.